Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host Mondane. This video is part of my Infinite Game Score series, and today we're going to be talking about Starlink Battle for Atlas. So, I bought Starlink well before I owned a Nintendo Switch. Once I heard about Star Fox in the game, I just had to buy it. Plus, Toys to Life and, you know, having a Toys to Life Star Fox and R-Wing just was too tempting for me. The story behind Starlink is fairly basic. Space exploration that goes wrong and bad guys that need to be defeated. You know, fairly simple. The mechanics of the game are great. Each pilot has skills, ships have stats, and weapons have elements, and you get to play with all kinds of different kinds of combinations. Um, the combat is a fast-paced third-person shooter with flight. The visuals and music are great, and they fit the mood of, uh, of the situation really, really well. I'm really happy with the ship's designs. Um, they, they look really good, and the build quality of the toys is absolutely excellent. Uh, Starlink is, you know, just a great game, and I, I had a lot of fun playing it. Sadly, I don't think we're going to get to see a second entry in the series, because Ubisoft got into the Toys to Life craze at the tail end, and they kind of got burned. That's truly a shame, because I would really enjoy more of the Starlink story and universe. Well, let's get to the game score. Oh, and don't forget to wait for the bonus at the end of this, where we go over the DLC. So, like always, every game starts off with a score of three because, well, it was created and it's a game and we got to enjoy it. Uh, this game is available both physically and digitally. Uh, the immersion of I'm sorry, uh, physical and digital gets it a, a score of one. Um, immersion, two points awarded. Uh, this was about as immersive as I could expect a title like this to be. Uh, multiple endings. Technically, yes, there is a multiple ending. Um, so it gets one. Uh, DLC. Ooh, boy, does this thing ever have DLC. Um, but it's also, a lot of it's represented in a Toys to Life fashion, so it gets a negative one. Uh, gimmick. Well, you know, it's Toys to Life, so plus one. Voice actors, English, one. Uh, game length, three. This game lasted a lot longer than I thought it would, would uh, last, and it didn't really feel like it was dragging anything out. So it definitely exceeded my expectations. Story. Well, like I said earlier, the story is pretty basic, but it didn't uh, underperform or uh, overperform, so it gets two points. Level design, three points. Um, I really like uh, the entire Atlas uh, system and how the planets are different and everything just feels uh, genuine. I really liked it a lot. Uh, so play balance, um, plus one point. Uh, I, I think it really is play balanced, especially for, you know, any kind of thing like that. Um, you know, and even going into head to head competitions and stuff, uh, complete experience, two points. I, I really do believe I had a complete experience with this. It didn't exceed my expectations, but they were definitely met, uh, sense of progression, Two points. Um, while I know that there is a huge progression system within the game with uh, modifications to things and uh, leveling up pilots and skills like that, um, it was very short-lived. Like all of the progression was very short. It's very easy to attain maximum everything in the game. So yeah, it only gets two points there. Fairness punishing RNG, two points. Uh, this game is very fair, um, not to the point where it exceeds my expectations, but they were definitely met. Technical difficulties, zero. I had zero technical difficulties with this thing. I was really surprised and happy. 
Um, has microtransactions, paywall solutions, selling, or over monetized? It's, guys, it loses three points here. Um, I know that hurts a lot, but, you know, it's, if you go and look at the, at the online shop for this, you can spend upwards of like 70 or $80 uh, just getting all the ships and stuff like that if you just go for them all digitally. Uh, game value to MSRP cost. Um, let's see, it was originally like, what, $69.99? Um, it's going to get a zero here because I think the game was a little overpriced, um, just to be honest. Uh, let's see, couch co-op. It has couch co-op. I really like that, so it gets a point. Soundtrack is two points. Uh, everything fits just right, but... None of the soundtrack was like gave me chills or, or like made me excited for for like any of it. So it just met my expectations, didn't exceed them. Visuals, two points. Again, just meeting my expectations. Difficulty, two points. Um, you know, they, they did a good job. There were no spikes or anything like that in difficulty. So I'm, I'm actually very happy with it. Uh, gameplay and combat. Uh, it gets three points here. Um, I really liked how the combat played out in this game and how you could swap things on the fly and, and really be adaptive to your situations. It was it was really nice, very refreshing. Um, the controls, a three. Uh, three points easily. You know, it's not hard. Um, uh, these controls have kind of been around forever and they just took something that works and just put it on their game. Uh, replay value. Now, guys, I'm not really much of a person who replays games, but uh, this one gets a three, because, uh, you know, not only can you replay from the start, but you can, you know, and, and like make different choices and stuff, but like, you know, you can, you can have a lot of fun with just continuing the game after the main story is over. Uh, the camera is definitely a three. Um, I never had a problem with the camera. Uh, it just seemed to work and be perfectly everywhere I needed it to be. Uh, unlockables and rewards, plus one, because all the modifiers in the game. Uh, sense of accomplishment. Here's where the game kind of felt weird. It's um, It only got one point on the sense of accomplishment, and that's mainly just because... Um, you set out everything that you knew to do, and you got it all done. And there were no, like, I don't know, there weren't any, like, big time surprises where it's like, uh, you know, oh, we, you know, here's this big plot twist and it makes everything exciting and, and it ups the stakes. The stakes are already high as soon as you get out of the gate, um, in this, in this game. And, um, you know, there's there's not really any going any higher on the stakes uh, for for the characters in the game, but um, that's that's all I've got for this one, guys. So with all of that, Starlink on the Nintendo Switch scores a unlimited game score of 41 points. Starlink on the Switch had two DLCs. The first was Crimson Moon and was provided for free. The Crimson Moon adds a competitive area to the game. Uh, it's basically the all the outlaws come together and they have their own version of the Olympics. Um, this area has gauntlets, arenas, and races and, and stuff like that. And it has a few exploration as you know areas as well. Um, it's a great expansion and it also adds new missions, enemies, exploration goals, you know, all of that stuff. I don't think I need to score Crimson Moon, to be honest, because it's free. So, you know what? Just just go download it. Now, to the real DLC review, the Star Fox team. Here you get three more pilots, Falco, Slippy, and Peppy. The additional missions task you to hunt down the Star Wolf crew, but it really isn't that simple. As a Star Fox fan, I really enjoy everything this DLC has to offer, and I don't regret buying it. But that's enough of me prattling on. Let's get to the score. Starting score for DLC is one point. 
Um, it was created, it was crafted, it was put into the game, and it actually functions. So it gets at least one point. Um, one cost. It scores a point there. Immersion scores two points. Down. Added story scores one point. Voice actors scores one point. DLC length scores one point. Story. I thought this was a good story and it scores one point. Uh, level design scores one scores two points. Haha. -ha. Complete experience scores two points. I thought this was a good complete experience for the DLC. Sense of progression scores three points. Um, it really felt that you were progressing towards a goal and that everything was was summing up to something and it was it was just really refreshing um let's see value to msrp cost so 17.95 for the dlc now that might seem like a lot but you're getting you're getting a lot for that um although i thought 17.95 was a little bit overpriced so it only gets one point here couch co-op of course just like the other game just like the main part of the game uh, couch co-op is present here as well so it scores one point soundtrack um the Star Fox stuff didn't really add too much to the soundtrack other than like during special abilities and stuff like that so it only scores one point visuals are two point difficulty is two points control is two points replay value is one point i didn't see the Star Fox missions having too much replayability um unlockables and rewards one point you do get a few things like that and sense of accomplishment is two points and so that means that uh for both things uh or yeah for both of them they get you know i guess a combined score of 30 which is really good i mean you know i don't really have a lot of dlc to compare to but you know this is a start and we'll see where we go from here Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.